Hey designer protein fans, this is Chrissy Arsenault. I am a registered dietitian and I'm also an ambassador for designer protein. It's honestly one of my favorite protein brands and I was so excited to partner with the team at Designer Protein to bring you a healthy grocery shopping tour. Um, so this is virtual and uh, we won't be actually walking through the aisles, but it's based on Trader Joe's. Now, I'm based out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. I know many of you have different Trader Joe's setups, so it'll be a little different depending on where you're joining us from, but welcome and thank you so much. And thanks to the folks at Trader Joe's as well for um, also providing us great products and also carrying designer protein for us to shop on. Um, so tonight, there's a couple of things that I'm gonna be going over with you guys. Super excited to be here. Um, first, we're gonna talk about guidelines for healthy grocery shopping. Now, what does that really mean? A lot of us are going back into the grocery now instead of doing online or um, in-store pickups. So um, it's good to always get a refresher on some of the tips and tricks that we might be able to use here. Um, secondly, we're going to go through a nutrition label. There's a lot of information on labels and I'm going to talk you through some of the things to watch out for, um, especially for those packaged items that have all this mumbo jumbo on the back. So we'll go through all of those in great detail. And then lastly, just tips and tricks to incorporate healthy items into your grocery shopping and your meals. So that includes items like my favorite designer protein product, um, but also some other uh, products as well. So um, I did wanna let you guys know also that there will be a giveaway. So tomorrow morning, I am gonna be posting from my um, Instagram, the Pink Pomplamoose, on two, three Trader Joe's bundles that will be given out. So each bundle, su again, super exciting. It has the Designer Protein Whey, um, a Designer Whey French Vanilla, Designer Whey Gourmet Chocolate, an Aria Women's Wellness Protein, and Designer Protein Shaker Bottle. So it's a, you know, a starter kit to get you um, trying some of the Designer Protein products. Some of you might be big fans already and love the products and just want extra for your pantry. Um, some of you might be trying it for the very first time, which in this case, super exciting for you guys and uh, definitely want you to try the product. So stay tuned, um, more details on that later, and I'll remind you guys at the end of the, the live presentation as well. So, like I mentioned, grocery shopping can be confusing, challenging, lots of things to navigate, right? There's a lot of different brands, a lot of products, um, nutrition claims that you see on things. And when our focus is health, this complicated um, environment can be still approached with the goal of trying to fulfill and um, nourish our bodies with the healthiest food possible. So today we'll go through the basics of nutrition, how to choose whole foods, and how to find them in the store. Um, but in general, the majority of our shopping should be done around the perimeter of the store. So, okay, so you walk into Trader Joe's, right? And there's um, all these aisles in the middle, and then there's aisles that are on the outside. So the ones that are on the outside periphery or the perimeter is where the majority of your healthiest uh, fresh whole foods are going to be found. Um, and then in the middle, that's where you're going to find more of the convenient but tempting product. Um, and especially when you check out too, there's like the little uh, chocolate bars at Trader Joe's and other things that you might be tempted to grab as an impulse buy. Um, so whenever possible, you want to try to stick to the perimeter of the store. That's where your fruits, veggies, fish, meat, and dairy are going to be found. Um, so today we'll go through each of these sections in detail, but first let's take a step back and go through some tips and tricks before you even get to the store. And grocery shopping is almost like a job interview. So if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So before you walk into that grocery store, um, Trader Joe's or wherever it may be, make sure you uh, have a plan. It would be like walking into a job interview without knowing what position you're applying for and who you're talking to, right? So you want to make sure you have a game plan, just as with anything. Um, so some tips and tricks that have worked for some of the clients that I've worked with, and personally for me as well, is, to, is a couple of things. Eat before you go. Um, if you're hungry, again, 
and you're gonna see a lot of those impulse buys and th see things like chips and chocolate and other things that you might be tempted to just grab while you're shopping. Um, so if possible, try to have a light snack or have a meal before you go into the grocery store. Um, or if that's not possible and you're kind of in a rush, then some things that might work are chewing on gum or sugar-free candy, something just to keep yourself busy and hydrated and full so that you aren't tempted to just grab everything in plain sight. Um, planning ahead is also key. So make sure that you have some sort of plan to, um, in terms of your meals that you're gonna have throughout the week, um, what snacks you're gonna eat, where and how you're going to eat. Um, and I like to always make up the grocery list before I go too. So um, some of you like, might like writing it down on pen and paper, others like to put it on a phone. There's also apps to help you keep track of, you know, what food groups and what foods you're actually choosing. Um, so consider all these things as you are uh, planning a trip to the grocery store. Um, and some other considerations as you approach this too, are um, how much prep time is it actually going to take to make a certain meal? You might have really good aspirations over the weekend, but then the week kicks in and you're like, hey, I'm too busy to actually make this meal on my own. I'm just gonna grab McDonald's or whatever. So think about how much time it takes. Think about the cost of things too. Can you um, put different, put the same ingredients in different meals and try to um, uh, incorporate all the ingredients that you do actually get at the grocery? Um, and then leftovers too are always helpful. So if you grab, um, if you have uh, food that you can prepare at one time and then save for later, that's always helpful to make sure that you can um, save some time there, especially if you're busy and on the go. And lastly, think about any diet and nutrition restrictions too. You know your body. And as it pertains to things like um, uh, gluten, gluten you want to make sure that you are on top of everything that um, you have to be mindful of before you even walk into that grocery store. Um, and when you're at the store, there's a couple of things and some ground rules. So let's go through that as well. So when you go into the grocery store, first read the, the front label. So it's speed reading, right? You don't have time to look through absolutely everything that's in the store. But um, if you grab any food product, look at the front and look at um, what things are being advertised. So you'll see things like fortified, enriched, plus, added usually those are things that mask the fact that the product might be um, highly processed so keep an eye out for that um, zero trans fat does not always mean zero trans fat so um, according to the rules um, up to 0.5 grams per serving is still considered zero grams so it may still contain hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils that are not going to be so great on your blood cholesterol so keep an eye out for that um, light and reduced calorie. We see this one a lot, especially for weight loss things, right? Um, so think about uh, whether it is actually truly still a whole food. So what I mean by that is when things are reduced or light, etc., cetera, um, it often means that it, it, there's other things to compensate for it. So we see a lot of sweeteners being added. If there's less sugar, then um, there's more salt added and other things that are going on there. Um, and next, flip the food around and look at the back. So you'll be looking for um, things that are on the ingredient list. Um, the fewer ingredients, the better typically the product, but it depends on what kind of product it is. So things that you're gonna be looking for are high fructose corn syrup, artificial colors, artificial flavoring, et cetera, and trying to avoid those as much as possible. Um, for things like meats, et cetera, you'll be avoiding benzoates, nitrates, nitrites, et cetera, and trying to minimize any of those ingredients that are added to foods versus things that are naturally occurring. Um, and then next you'll look at the nutrition facts label. Um, so this is where majority of the nutritional value is actually outlined. So it helps you determine, does this food meet my needs? And um, trying to figure out uh, what things are great about it and what things are not so great about it. Um, so that's always a good indicator as well. So for those of you um, who have not 
seen a nutrition label before, I will pull up the one for um, a designer protein. So here we see, it, we see at the top how many servings there are. So this is the French vanilla that I got at Trader Joe's. Um, there's 11 servings in this container. So that means I can get 11 protein shakes out of it. So that's at the very top where it says nutrition facts and then under it there's 11 servings per container. Um, and then the serving size where it says one scoop, that's what the rest of the nutrition label is based on. Meaning that, you know, if you see 110 calorie, it means each scoop has 110 calories. So that's the best way to think about it. So um, it, the serving sizes matter because if you look at the entirety of the tub and you, let's say hypothetically you were drinking 11 protein shakes, um, it means that you would have to do some math to multiply based on X number of scoops, how much nutrition you're getting in terms of calories, fat, et cetera, that are in um, the amount of food that you're eating. So as you look at this, the number of calories, based on the recent nutrition labeling changes, the calories has been highlighted in bold and bigger so that you can see that information very prominently. So if you're going through the grocery aisles, it's very easy to be able to just um, uh, quickly scan this if that's something that you're tracking. If not, no worries. And then as you go down, um, you'll see total fat and then the types of fats that are in here. Um, so typically, uh, uh, milk proteins do contain um, different fats, right? Because uh, milk uh, contains fat itself. So if you get milk proteins, there will be a little bit of fat. Um, you want to try to minimize the amount of saturated fat from foods. And you see here it's pretty low in saturated fat um, and doesn't have much of other fats in there. And then there's cholesterol. Um, so again, uh, similar to uh, the saturated fat, a lot of the cholesterol comes from animal proteins um, and animal-based foods like eggs, dairy, and meat. Um, so trying to minimize that as much as possible. But there are, uh, th there are studies that now show that dietary cholesterol doesn't necessarily lead to blood cholesterol. So something to keep in mind. Next we see sodium. Um, so that's synonymous with salt. And um, the average American eats more sodium in a day than what is recommended. So um, I believe the average was around 3,400 milligrams in a day for the average American, whereas the recommendation is anywhere from 1,500 to 2,300, depending on your medical conditions, of course, um, and your dietary preferences. So trying to keep the sodium down is great. And for this product, you see the sodium is low, which is good to see. Um, and then carbs. Carbs are always demonized but um, in reality it is a great source of uh, fuel and it's a primary energy source that your body uses first as fuel so before your body goes and uses fat or protein it first looks to carbs as the source of energy um, so the carbs here are important dietary fiber uh, helps you stay full and we see there's three grams here um, from a probiotic blend that's in there so great to see um, and then sugars again, Again, it's broken down into naturally occurring sugars and the added sugars with the recent labeling change the added sugars has been added on um, so that helps to show how much of your calories are coming from um, added versus naturally occurring and in this case there's only one gram of added sugar and then lastly, um, you see um, protein, and this is where designer protein really excels. So um, depending on your protein needs, you may need to supplement with a product like designer protein. A lot of you are runners, um, weightlifting, et cetera, so make sure that you're getting enough protein. And um, in this scoop of designer whey protein, for example, there's 20 grams of protein in there. And then lastly, there's essential vitamins and minerals. Um, I like to call out there's different vitamin B um, a, a complexes here to help with energy, metabolism, and some other fun essential functions in your body. So super, super important. So now that we've talked about the nutrition label, let's get started on our virtual healthy grocery tour. It's the fun part. So I took a couple snapshots at Trader Joe's that I'm going to share with you guys. The first being produce. Um, so fruits and veggies, it's one of the first things that you see as you walk into Trader Joe's. 
Um, as a rule of thumb, I like to at least recommend five servings of fruits and veggies in a day as a bare minimum. Um, and this is where planning ahead helps because if you don't eat any fruits and veggies by the time you get to dinner time, it's virtually impossible to try to stuff everything into that one meal. So make sure you spread out, you know, here's what I'm going to eat some fruit and here's where I'm going to eat some veggies throughout your day um, so that you know what to expect as you walk into that grocery store. Um, and it, eating the rainbow is important when it comes to produce. So choose a variety of colors. My picture here probably is not the best bet for it because everything is green and yellow. But um, in general, you know, you want to try to get a variety of different colors when it comes to produce. Um, and think about uh, what it takes to actually prepare the fruits and veggies too. So, you know, watermelons, melons, like great, but are you actually going to take it home and cut it up to make sure that you have enough throughout the week? So those are considerations um, to make sure that um, you'll actually end up eating it. Or if you find that convenience is more important for you, you may wanna go with pre-cut veggies or pre-cut fruits to make sure that um, the work is taken out of it and you can just you know, enjoy as soon as you buy it. Um, and then there is the, the debate of non-starchy versus starchy vegetables. Um, in general, you wanna try to get as much um, uh, non-starchy vegetables as possible. So things like your dark leafy greens, etc. But starchy vegetables always have a place. So remember that all foods fit. So things like starchy vegetables, like peas, corn, etc. you can still work into your diet, but remember that they are a source of carbs. So you want to try to balance out your meal with some other components in there. Um, and lastly, just one tip that also helps is trying to include one fruit or vegetable with every meal and snack. And that way you can hit your five for the day. So that makes it super easy to um, get through your day and have something with you at every meal that's a fruits or fruit or vegetable. Um, and then next I'm going to be sharing a um, snapshot of some of the other things that are available here. Um, so here are some fruits and veggies and at Trader Joe's um, there are a lot of things that are organic so let's talk about organic what that actually means because a lot of um, people come to me and ask hey does organic mean that it's actually healthier and well actually it, it, it just means that the food is not is not been chemically or genetically altered while it's been grown um, and in order for something to be organic certified 95% of the ingredients have to be organically produced so that's when you see that certification on there. Um, in general, I recommend uh, trying to avoid the dirty dozen because these are the, the foods that typically have the most pesticides when you see um, foods that are organic. So things like strawberries, spinach, nectarines, apples, peaches, pears, cherries, grapes, celery, tomato, sweet bell peppers, um, potatoes. These are the types of, of, fr of fruits and veggies that typically have more pesticides in there. Um, but remember that organic does not necessarily mean that it's uh, pesticide free. Um, so always wash your produce. Um, make sure you get either a veggie wash or just wash it over um, water before you actually consume it. And recognize that organic is um, based on perceived health benefits and it's a lifestyle preference. So if you prefer things that are more natural, not uh, treated with pesticides, then organic is going to be a good fit for you, but not necessarily healthier because it's organic. Um, next, I will go through juices and smoothies. All right, so juicing is such a big trend. Um, and I often get asked, are juices good for you? Are smoothies good for you, et cetera? Um, so typically, so juicing in the traditional sense, if you put it through a juicer or just extract the juice from fruits, it's concentrated in calories because you're squeezing just that juice um, and you're taking the fiber out of it. So think about like an orange, uh, an, a set of oranges that are going through to become orange juice. There's gonna be less fiber because you're taking the pulp out of it, removing it, and just drinking the juice. 
Um, where I see juicing being beneficial is as a starting point. So if you absolutely don't like fruits and veggies, super easy to just stuff things like celery, um, oranges, apples, etc., in a juicer. Um, but cleanses are not healthy. You have your liver for that. Your liver um, is essentially a way to be able to detox. You don't need to do a separate detox just to lose weight or be healthier. Um, smoothies, on the other hand, are a great option if you are um, looking to incorporate a couple of extra fruits, veggies, and perhaps even some protein into your diet. Um, so think about a smoothie as a, a formula. So you've got your base. So if you're a milk drinker, you've got milk. Um, if you uh, prefer dairy alternatives, then you can add things like almond milk, coconut milk, um, soy milk, etc. So that's your base. And then you add some sort of fruit or vegetable in there. So that's where you can uh, choose based on your preference. You can do things like strawberry kiwi. You can add some kale in there, spinach, apple, whatever fruits and veggies are your favorite. So that's a fun place where you can be creative. And then lastly, a boost. So that's where designer protein is really great because if you um, just had a tough workout, for example, or if you need a quick meal replacement, you can add in protein and make it a filling meal because from your base and your fruits and veggies, you're not gonna get the protein to be able to satisfy your protein needs for that meal. So that's where that boost is really helpful. So think about your base, your fruits and veggies, and your boost as you um, make your smoothie. And designer protein really makes it easy. So at Trader Joe's, I mentioned, you know, we have designer whey protein offered in two flavors, um, but there's other uh, types of uh, protein to meet your needs too. So if you're plant-based, there's um, plant options, there's egg, um, there's soy, there's a designer protein for everyone to be able to use as a boost. Um, and so that's where a boost can be helpful when you're looking at smoothies. In general, as you navigate this aisle, you'll see a lot of pulpless juices um, and you won't see a lot of smoothies that actually uh, contain protein. And they tend to be on the expensive side too. So if you're looking for something that's rich in vitamins and minerals and still provides you with the protein needs, um, uh, then it's best to just make a smoothie at home with your favorite fruits, veggies, boost, and a base. So next, we will navigate to the meats, fish, and protein aisle. Lots of foods that can be found here. Um, and meat and fish a lot of times get a bad rep, but they are a high quality source of um, protein and they serve essential needs in your body. So protein is made of things called amino acids. They're essentially building blocks that um, make up protein. Um, and protein helps you retain and build lean muscle in your body. Um, and a lot of times some of these meats and fish and other proteins that you find here are gonna be good sources of zinc, iron, selenium, and some B vitamins. Um, so moderate high quality protein, whether it's plant-based or meat-based, can help you um, feel full and maintain your energy levels throughout the day. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind when you're looking at different meat selections, um, try to choose the leanest cut that's available of beef, pork, um, poultry, you name it. Um, the fat that's in meat contains saturated fat, um, and those are the fats that are linked to clogging up your arteries and, and raising your bad cholesterol in your body. So you wanna try to minimize the saturated fat calories that you get. And if you look at the term loin, um, it's generally synonymous with lean. Um, so inspect the meat anyway, but if you see that term on there, you're probably good to go. Um, and if for whatever reason you can't find meats here that are uh, fat free or minimizing fat, you can try to look at the ones that you can trim away the fat with a knife when you get home too. So a couple of options to try to keep, to keep meat lean as possible. Um, and next, try to choose the most natural meats possible um, where it, it's minimizing your chances of getting chemical preservatives in there. So again, like when I talked about organic, I mentioned it is a lifestyle choice. So if you want to try to get things like grass-fed meat, organic meat, um, that's a personal preference, but it, it, it avoids um, the cows and chickens, etc., that are grain-fed versus grass-fed. And um, some people have a taste preference on which one tastes better as well. Um, 
For fish, a general rule of thumb is to try to get fish two times a week. Um, and that's because fish contains omega-3 fatty acids that reduce inflammation, support brain health, and other, th other great functions in your body. Um, so if you're not an avid fish person, just know that there is a lot of great omega-3s in here and you can try to compensate with um, flaxseed and other sources of omega-3, but fish is such a great source of that and some of the healthy fats um, that you won't get anywhere else. Um, if you are a person who likes fish, um, consider getting wild caught salmon versus farm, uh, farm raised ones because farm fish typically contain dyes. So when you see salmon, it's orange um, and it's, it's not a natural color that occurs. So it's best to try to stick to um, wild caught salmon as much as possible. Same with some other fish where there might be artificial dyes or other things that are added in. Um, so best to go with wild caught. And then deli meats, always controversial, but again, seek it out in its more natural form. So on the front, you should see things like no nitrates, no nitrates, um, and look for short familiar words on the ingredient list. Um, so if, if you pick up uh, deli meat and it's got a bunch of ingredients in there that you don't recognize, then that might not be a good choice. Um, and then a common question that, uh, that I typically get is how much protein is actually enough? So if you look at the palm of your hand, um, and everyone's palms are a little different, um, your palm is about three ounces. So that's the amount that you should typically try to shoot for at every meal, one to two servings. So one or two palmfuls, depending on your weight, your age, your activity level, etc. cetera. Um, so that can come from, again, meats, designer protein, or any other supplement, um, or plant-based sources like beans and legumes as well. Um, as far as eggs, they always get a bad rep um, because of the dietary cholesterol that they contain. But they, but like I mentioned, there is uh, now research that shows that dietary cholesterol does not necessarily translate into blood cholesterol. So eggs are great. Um, egg substitutes uh, don't typically have the, the protein in there and they remove the fatty yolk in there and thus some of the vitamin content that typically comes with um, eggs as well. So. Um, um, eggs are not an evil to be avoided if you are on an animal-based um, diet and not a plant-based diet. And then as far as plant-based proteins, the biggest thing to watch out for in this aisle is the amount of sodium and other ingredients that are added to things. So things like tofu, for example, um, don't have much added in there. Um, there's also great choices of beans and legumes where you can get some plant-based protein. Um, miracle noodles are really popular, so those are your those are made of mushrooms. Um, there's also tempeh and some other um, brands that offer meat-like um, plant-based protein as well. But if you look at these and you look at the label, a lot of times these uh, foods are going to be higher in sodium. Um, so try to check the label before you actually buy it and when possible try to get things like lentils, uh, legumes, uh, beans, and tofu where a lot of the extra fluff is not included in there. So next I'm going to go to the dairy aisle. Lots of things here. So, um, so starting with uh, yogurt, because there's a lot of yogurt and some eggs there. Um, yogurt's an actual, e actually an excellent source of calcium and protein in your diet, um, and it, a lot of people avoid it for carbs. But if you look at the nutrition label on yogurt, a lot of the carbs are naturally occurring because milk contains a natural sugar called lactose. Um, so a lot of the carbs are from there. But when you look at some of the added sugars to yogurt, they tend to be high in some other um, sources as well. So you'll see a lot of the yogurts that have fruit on the bottom. Um, there's also yogurts that have honey or other uh, sugar, high fructose corn syrup added in there. Um, and it's typically also regarded as just a breakfast item or a snack item throughout the day, but you can actually use it for baking too in, in lieu of oil. So, um, and it can be used for different dessert items as well. So keep that in mind as you're looking at the yogurt there. 
Um, the best type of yogurt to go after in this aisle is typically plain yogurt. And that doesn't mean you have to necessarily eat it plain because you can take plain yogurt home and add nuts, um, seeds, and fruit to it as much as you desire. Um, but make sure you look at the ingredients as well. And Greek yogurt is really popular. Um, it's a creamy, higher protein alternative to the soupy yogurt. So um, if you wanna try to get more protein in your diet and you prefer the texture that's a little bit more thicker instead of soupy and watery, then Greek, uh, Greek yogurt might be a great choice for you as well. Um, just a quick note on light protein, light uh, yogurts uh, that contain protein. Um, a lot of times they're lower in calories because the sugar content is cut out, but it also means that there's other things like artificial sweeteners added in um, and potentially even, you know, um, other things to try to compensate for the lack of calories and the, the fat in there. So just make sure to check the label before you buy yogurt. Next, we're gonna go to cheese. And cheese at Trader Joe's, if you know, you know, there's so many different selections. Um, and cheese can be enjoyed with any meal or snack as a good source of protein and fat in moderation. Um, so as you look at some of the different cheeses that are in this aisle, um, try to choose cheeses that have reduced fat and are made with no chemical color or preservatives in there. The more natural, the better. Um, and there's a lot of low sodium cheese choices too because cheese is generally frowned upon for being salty and having a lot of sodium, but there's cheeses like Swiss and mozzarella, especially fresh mozzarella that you can cut up and have with some other foods as part of your meal. They're great for snacking, helps boost your protein intake, or it goes really well in a sandwich um, as you navigate your day. Um, and something weird that a lot of folks don't know is that cheese is actually naturally creamy white. So you, once you, when you walk down this aisle, there's a lot of bright orange cheeses. You see some in this um, photo as well. Um, those are actually dyed in color. So look for cheeses that have natural coloring as much as possible. Um, and uh, keep in mind that that's not the natural color that cheese normally comes with. Um, ricotta is also low in fat, so another great cheese to choose. It's derived from the whey part of the milk, so you can try to um, spread it on whole grain or an English muffin or other things, or maybe some whole grain crackers as a snack as well. Feta or reduced fat feta has a strong flavor, but it's enjoyable, so you can enjoy it with um, a, a crackers and other things as well, or put in your salad. Um, and it's naturally lower in lactose for those of you who are natural, uh, that are lactose intolerant. Um, and cottage cheese too, so I don't really count this as a cheese in the traditional sense, but um, it is a great source of protein, and, and the only thing to watch out for here again is that it can be high in sodium, so make Make sure to squeeze it in in moderation and watch your sodium intake for the remainder of the day. Next we'll go to butter and margarine. Okay, so there is such a great debate on different spreadable fats and is butter good for you, is margarine good for you, etc. Um, and typically you want to look at the types of fats that are in there. So um, you want to try to avoid fats that contain trans fats. Um, anything that has hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oil contains trans fats and trans fats in your body can raise your uh, bad blood cholesterol and uh, lower your good cholesterol at the same time. So it's, uh, it's a double whammy when it comes to your blood cholesterol. So it clogs up your arteries and gets rid of the good stuff that's in there. Um, but ultimately it comes to taste. I like to recommend oils as much as possible over solid fats, um, cause that's where you're gonna see more of the healthier fats in your body instead that, uh, the healthier fats that translate to good fats in your body instead of the trans fats and the saturated fats. Um, and personally, I'm a big fan of um, things that are plant-based in the oil section, which we'll go through later. Um, and dairy alternatives, just a quick note on dairy alternatives for milk. There's so many out there from almond to soy to rice to coconut, um, sometimes even hemp 
milk. Um, and the only thing to watch out for there is that they're generally lower in protein. So check the protein content before you buy because because milk gen has milk proteins that are naturally higher in that protein content. Um, you won't get that just extracted from seeds or nuts, for instance. So, um, and the calcium and the vitamin D that you see in there are fortified um, because they don't naturally occur in things like coconuts. Um, so if you are getting um, almond milk, for example, which I'm a big fan of because I'm lactose intolerant, so I can't have a ton of lactose and milk content, um, I try to, if I'm having uh, my nightly milk of um, almond milk, I try to add designer protein in there so that it's got a, a good source of protein in there and it's almost like having a glass of milk um, without getting the digestive um, effects of uh, drinking milk itself. Um, next, we'll go to grains and starches. So lots of foods in this aisle. Um, in general, you want to shoot for whole grain because that contains the bran. Um, and the bran is where vitamins, minerals, um, the fiber is found, and the nutty flavor that you typically get from whole grain foods as well. So if you choose white bread, that's where a lot of the fiber and the nutrients are stripped because the bran has uh, been removed and it's just the kernel that's inside. Um, and so it, it, when you choose whole grains, you're getting more of the benefits in there. And there's a lot of talk on ancient grains that are whole grains too. They're being marketed as healthier, but ultimately they're whole grains um, and they're a great way to diversify what you're um, cooking with your meals instead of just having rice or pasta, which can get boring. Um, and when it comes to uh, fiber, it, it can do a couple of different things. So um, fiber can help you stay full throughout the day um, and it uh, helps stave off hunger too. So it promotes healthy digestion, keeps you full, um, and you're gonna have to search the nutrition labels. So the nutrition label we went through earlier, the designer protein had three grams of dietary fiber. So you wanna look for the dietary fiber that's in grains and if it's not high in fiber, you may want to consider a different grain to choose. Um, for as a general rule of thumb, as you look at a grain, try to choose something that has over five grams of fiber in that serving and with as few added sugars as possible. Um, and added sugar can be disguised in, a diff in different ways too. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be table sugar. There's going to, it's going to be masked as high fructose corn syrup, brown sugar, corn syrup, fructose, um, honey, dextrose, you name it. So sugar comes in different names as well. And then next we'll talk about gluten-free. If I can pull up my gluten-free greens here. All right, and Trader Joe's has a big selection of gluten-free grains. Um, the reality of gluten-free is that most consumers don't actually need to be gluten-free. Um, I do hear a lot of clients that lose weight as a result of going gluten-free, but think about some of the foods that are you're, you're removing from your diet as a result of being gluten-free. So you're cutting out things like um, donuts and cookies and brownies and that pizza that you love. Um, so all of those things are gone from a gluten-free diet, um, and as a result, you're saving a lot of calories. But for people that live with celiac disease, this is a nutrition prescription. So it's a therapy to help alleviate the inflammation and the effects that you get from um, celiac disease. Um, so it is a trending diet, which is good for people with celiac disease because you can walk into Trader Joe's and there's so many different foods that are gluten-free that are available for you. But if you feel that you have a gluten sensitivity, um, but not necessarily celiac disease, talk to your dietitian about getting a food sensitivity or an allergy test to see if this is something that you actually need to restrict. Now we'll go to cereals and granola.
And the biggest watch out here is that uh, cereals and granola are a typical breakfast item, but they are jam-packed with added sugars. So try to avoid um, added sugar as much as possible. When possible, I like to actually choose um, steel-cut oats over cereal because most cereals tend to be higher in sugar content. Um, and make sure that the first ingredient that's listed on there for that cereal is whole grain. Um, so things to watch out for, added sugar, um, make sure there's enough fiber fiber and that um, the ingredient, the first ingredient there is whole grain. Um, and then we'll talk about some of the canned and processed foods um, and a couple of things to cover there. But in general, when you look at canned vegetables, they're going to be higher in sodium. So look for alternatives that are either marked low sodium, no added salt, or if you can't necessarily find something that's low in sodium, buy it and then rinse it out a couple of times before you eat it and you should be able to minimize the sodium content that's in there. So now that we've navigated the majority of the, um, the outside of the aisle, we're navigating the inside of the aisles where more of the processed foods can be found. Um, so first starting with soups, Trader Joe's has a great soup selection. Um, again, try to choose low sodium varieties. Things like low sodium broth, etc., are great to incorporate in um, as part of meals. Um, but if, if whenever you are choosing soups, make sure that they contain as few ingredients as possible and contain low sodium. Same goes for pastas and sauces. And again, Trader Joe's has a very robust variety here. Um, try to choose whole grain pastas whenever possible. And there's also plant-based pastas too. So you'll see things like lentil pasta that are popping up and really cool to try out to see if they stack up to the real thing. Um, and in terms of sauces, Alfredo tends to be higher in fat and calories. Um, so if you can go with an oil-based one or even just add olive oil and um, a little bit of Parmesan that goes a long way. If not, marinara is going to be lower in calories, um, but you get still some of the benefits of tomatoes and then Alfredo is higher in fat and calories. So next we will go to nuts and seeds here. You can buy a lot of nuts and seeds in bulk or packaging at Trader Joe's, which is great. Um, a lot of, uh, in general, nuts and seeds are high in unsaturated fats, which um, are going to be your fats that raise your good blood cholesterol. Um, the only thing to look for here, and I feel like I say that about all the different packaged foods that you find in the aisles, is to watch the salt content. So you wanna choose ones that are unsalted or lightly salted when you choose nuts and seeds in this aisle. And chips and crackers, um, highly debated because people um, like their veggie straws or some of the veggie chips that are out there, but even though they have some vitamins and minerals from veggies, they're still chips, so they're gonna be high in salt cravings. So one question that I did get is, you know, how do we stave um, salt cravings and make sure that we control quantities while still meeting that craving? Um, one great tip is if you buy a big bag of chips, um, portion it out into little Ziploc bags um, as much as possible or little tubs uh, that you you have in this in the house to make sure that it's portioned out and you stick to the serving size that's on the label instead of just eating right out of the bag same goes with things like popcorn because it's so easy to just eat things like this out of the bag and um, it's harder to stop um, and if possible you can also try your hand at making chips at home so um, kale chips are among some of my favorites where you can just uh, lightly brush it with oil and some salt or whatever seasoning you want and just stick it in the oven. You can do the same with things like carrots, um, sweet potatoes, etc. to try to get um, more natural chips into your diet that aren't so heavily processed. Next we'll go to oils here. So here you'll see a lot of great things. My personal favorites are olive oil, avocado oil, and coconut oil. Um, the plant-based oils are typically higher in unsaturated fats that are uh, that contain healthy, heart-healthy fats for your um, body. 
But coconut oil does contain some saturated fats, but the great thing about it is that they're, it contains medium chain triglycerides, which are absorbed and used more efficiently in the body. And there is a lot of emerging research that shows that it can support metabolism. So um, it's been a popular source of um, oil and one that I personally love for cooking because it just makes everything taste better as well. Next we'll go to beverages here. Um, so Trader Joe's typically has healthier beverages, so you won't see a lot of the energy and sports drinks. These are like your healthier, better for you uh, uh, beverages that you see here. So a couple things that I'll point out. There's a lot of probiotic drinks. So um, there's kefir, kombucha, things that contain probiotics to help with your digestion. Um, and then there is also coconut oil. So it is, uh, or coconut water. So coconut water is the liquid found in the middle of the coconut while coconut milk is made from the meat on the outside like the inside shell of the coconut and coconut water is low in calories and high in potassium so it's almost like a sports drink like having a Gatorade um, but in a natural form and then um, there's some fermented drinks as well um, again these are great sources of probiotics and it leaves good bacteria in your gut that help break down sugars um, such as lactose to help with your digestion so next we'll go to um, one of my favorites um, supplements so first i will share um, designer way. So um, when it comes to supplements, I like to say um, stack them if you need them. Um, so personally for me, I love uh, designer whey protein because I'm a powerlifter and um, I try to go on as much hikes as possible. So um, it's a great way to incorporate protein in my day, especially if I'm having plant-based meals. So at Trader, at my local Trader Joe's in Colorado, it is $11.99. So it roughly is about a dollar and nine cents per serving um, and in this gourmet chocolate uh, version there's 20 grams of protein um, it's made with uh, a full spectrum of peptides so you'll get complete protein out of there plus there's things like glutamine leucine taurine and phenylalanine to help with your recovery after your workout so these are you know essential amino acids to help with recovery and help you build muscle um, and, and, and most uh, protein shakes don't actually have things that help support your digestion. So if you drink just like your regular protein shake, you can actually get very constipated because there's a lot of vitamins and minerals and protein, but there's no fiber. But in this case, there's a probiotic blend and dietary fiber that's in there to help with your digestion. And then lastly, um, there's a B vitamin complex to help with um, energy and metabolism, as well as some other essential um, vitamins and minerals as well. One of my favorite things is that it's also low in sugar. There's only one gram of added sugar in this uh, chocolate, and I believe the, um, the vanilla as well. So it's one of my favorite things when I'm looking at a protein shake. It has to be high in protein, it has to be quality protein, which designer protein provides, and then it has to be low in sugar. So that's um, a designer way in a nutshell. And then Aria, um, this is a women's wellness protein. And let me just pull it up here. Um, it's a little cheaper at $9.99. Um, it's got 15 grams of non-GMO, delicious natural uh, protein. So it's a little bit less than you get from the whey. So if you're moderately active versus like your competitive athlete, Aria might be a great choice for you. Um, it also contains nutrients that are really great for us ladies. So this one goes out to the ladies, right? So it's got things like uh, biotin and vitamin C for healthy, youthful looking skin, hair, and nails. So it really helps you get that natural natural glow um, on top of all the healthy food and uh, that you're eating and the workouts that you're incorporating in. Plus it's got um, things like calcium, vitamin D, and phosphorus um, to help with your bone health so that you um, stay strong and um, folate to help with cell and tissue growth in your body. 
Um, and lastly, it's got pre and post uh, biotics. And so again, if you are used to typical protein that um, makes you feel a little bit gassy, this one is not going to be the case. It helps with your digestion. So really great one for the ladies. And it's got um, low calories, so it's easy to incorporate into anything that you um, eat. You can have it standalone or you can um, have it in a smoothie and mix it up with fruits and veggies like some of the smoothies that I talked about earlier. Um, or you can use it for things like baking. So if you've got a sweet tooth, then you can easily incorporate it into your diet um, and, and, and satisfy your sweet tooth at the same time. Um, one of my favorite things is that these tubs are actually not that big. Um, so I take them with me to the gym as post-workout fuel so I don't have to wait until I get home. Um, and I also like to make little protein balls with it so you can mix it with things like, um, uh, you can mix it with nut butters of your favorite choice um, and be able to uh, incorporate it in as snacks or you can bake with it as well. So a lot of really great options to incorporate in either Aria or Designer Way into your diet. And one other aisle that I like to go through um, is ethnic food. So Trader Joe's has done a really great job of providing you basically a tour around the world when it comes to a lot of different foods. There's a lot of excitement and curiosity and there's new foods that are constantly being added on here. Um, and they're popular with foodies for sure. They're great to try out. Um, some of my favorite ethnic foods as I go through the frozen and fresh aisles here are things that are high in uh, probiotics. So you'll see a lot of foods that come from other cultures that are actually high in probiotics like kimchi. Um, you'll also find ways to diversify what you're currently cooking. So as you look to your seasonings and flavors, there's a lot of fun things that you can do to um, spice up your routine from what you're doing instead of the boring salt and pepper. Um, so lots of great seasonings to try there and add different things to your repertoire. So if you have friends that are from other parts of the country or from the world, it's always great to get their recommendation on what ethnic foods um, they would like to recommend to you because there's a lot of great um, flavor and taste that you can incorporate into your diet. And the Trader Joe's again has so many different things that you can pick up that are really cool and you won't find anywhere else. Um, and then continuing on into the frozen aisle, there's a lot of fruits and veggies that are also frozen and something that I commonly get questions on. Um, so frozen versus canned veggies, first of all. Um, frozen veggies are a great option and they typically tend to be cheaper than getting something that's fresh. Um, so of course getting fresh veggies is great, but um, if you're like me, you slack on cooking fresh veggies and then they all go bad by the end of the week. So I actually really like frozen veggies, like things like Brussels sprouts, um, broccoli, etc., to pick up in this aisle. Um, and they still, they're frozen at the point of freshness, so you don't have to worry about them going bad, and they're still um, a great option for you and packed with vitamin, essential vitamins and uh, minerals. And then frozen fruits, um, again, tend to be typically cheaper actually than getting fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, depending on what part of the country you live, you might also have seasonal fruits and veggies where things aren't always available or they're available, but they look like they're withering away or they um, go bad within two days of getting it and putting it in your fridge. So um, frozen fruits are great to add to your repertoire, especially for things like smoothies. So my favorite go-to smoothie is just um, mixing up some almond milk with um, frozen berries for the antioxidants that are in there with some um, designer protein to be able to get um, all my essential uh, nutrients including protein, fiber, um, and all the vitamins and minerals that go in there too. Um, and uh, Trader Joe's does a good job of looking at some of these toppings here too. So in addition to designer protein being available, you can find things like chia seed and flaxseed as you'll find here. They try to look at things that are complementary to each other. So um, they've thought about what kind of smoothies people might like and um, incorporated them on there. And as it goes for other foods, um, you'll see a lot of um, ice cream, desserts, etc. All foods fit into your diet, but try to have some of these in moderation as you watch things like your calories. Um, make sure you're getting the, the most nutrient-dense foods in your diet, but of course, anything here and there can be um, appropriate. So don't limit yourself. If you want to have um, a, a frozen tub of ice cream here and there, go for it. Um, next, I'll go through ready-to-eat foods. 
And there is a variety of frozen and fresh ready to eat foods um, as you go through Trader Joe's. So limits are, uh, there's no limits when you walk into Trader Joe's, right? So some foods are sold by weight. Um, so be mindful of things that are heavy and may actually cost a lot of money to get. Um, and then there's other things like sandwiches and salads. But so weigh um, how much convenience you value versus the, the nutrition value of different foods um, and how much time it would actually take for you to make something at home. Things that are helpful in aisles like this are things like rotisserie chicken or quick meals that you can grab and go. But remember, um, we talked about before you, going in, before you go into the grocery store, try to plan ahead and have meals um, planned out and snacks planned out ahead of time. So if you've done your planning, then you can make your own grab and go. So before you even walk out of the house, you can grab whatever is in the fridge and prepared and ready to go instead of spending all that money. But again, it's a personal choice and Trader Joe's does offer a lot of different foods um, that at your fingertips that offer convenience and let you um, walk out with uh, good choices if you don't feel like cooking tonight. Um, and lastly, I'll talk about just general um, tips. So in general, I think you've heard that um, it, it's good to get a variety of different foods in your diet. So look at the different food groups from fruits, veggies, dairy or dairy alternatives, meat, fish, um, and trying to shut the perimeter of a store and sticking to uh, fresh, wholesome foods as much as possible. Um, but at the same time, allow some indulgences. So if you uh, want to indulge on a little bit and get some chips here and there, that's okay. Um, just try to balance out the rest of your day and plan ahead. So if you, instead of snacking on chips at night, if you can incorporate it in as an afternoon snack and it's already accounted for, you can be mindful of some of the other foods that you're eating throughout the day. Um, and incorporate healthy staples like designer protein in your diet. Um, for me personally, I struggle because if I am only getting uh, plant-based sources in a day, then I don't get enough protein to meet my needs for the athletic activity um, that I partake in. So I try to um, have designer protein on hand in my gym bag, in the pantry, available pretty much any time to be able to have throughout the day, either as a meal replacement, a post-workout snack, or in the evening when I'm getting some sweet cravings because that gourmet chocolate actually really tastes like chocolate, which is awesome. Um, and in terms of meal planning, make sure that um, you do your prep. So um, you've probably seen a lot of people do what's called meal prepping. So that's when you pick uh, meat, a grain, and some sort of vegetable, and you prepare for the week. And that's actually a really great strategy so um, that you have something on hand at all times. But variety is key there. So um, instead of eating chicken and broccoli every single week, try to vary it up a little bit and try something new and different. You can experiment with some different spices and sauces from all around the world, which Trader Joe's is really good for, um, and have your go-to recipes. So if you see something that you like on Instagram or YouTube, save that for later and try to um, re re replicate it um, as much as you can um, if you know that you like the taste of it. And lastly, we're all human and practice makes perfect. So we're not gonna get everything right the first time. Um, and I will say it is a lot easier to shop from an app or shop online for your groceries and to go into the store to actually do it because there's so many temptations. When you're on your app, it doesn't say, did you want that Sour Patch Kids? You kind of go through your laundry list of what you want um, for that week and what you need and specifically shop for those. When you go into the store hungry, then you you are going to be faced with a lot more temptations and impulse buys, so just be mindful of that. Um, and give yourself a little bit of grace at the end of the day. Um, think about food as fuel, but it's okay to have a donut here and there. Um, just try to make healthy choices the majority of the time. So that is it as far as our live grocery store tour. Again, thank you so much for joining. Um, a couple things that I'll point out, there is a giveaway. So um, for those of you who are just joining and weren't at the beginning of the, of the Instagram live, um, there is a Trader Joe's bundle and there's three that we're gonna be giving away. So um, there is a designer, uh, a designer way gourmet chocolate, 
there's a designer way um, French vanilla and a shaker bottle and Aria women's protein so all of those things are in that bundle and I'll be choosing we'll be th choosing three winners total so check out my Instagram I will um, provide a post uh, tomorrow and um, after a couple of days designer protein will be picking the winners there um, and and if you have any other questions feel free to reach out to us hopefully this was helpful and just know that we are here for you um, designer protein is a really great choice to incorporate into your grocery shopping trip so next time you're at Trader Joe's check it out thanks so much guys and have a great evening